We got to talk about Raw, the sure. Raw report. It opened up with Drew McIntyre coming out, and this guy cut a great promo because he is a classic heel that thinks he's done nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. He said, everyone's asking why, Drew, why. I haven't changed one bit. I haven't lied one time. I'm not lying now. If you're a fan of mine, I don't have to explain myself. If you turned on me, well, you were never a fan in the first place. I don't care about you guys. Jay attacked me from behind time after time after time. Last week, I looked him right in the eye, and I jumped him. And I'm sure Jay wants me to say I'm sorry, but I don't remember one apology to me or anybody that he screwed over, he says. So why should I get over anything? My family. I sacrificed for years. I missed birthdays. I missed holidays. And it clashed in the castle. That was supposed to be my night. And your family took everything from my family. So everyone's asking if I join the Judgment Day. Well, the answer is no. But I will be on their team at Survivor Series because Rhea offered me something nobody else could, and that is you, Jey Uso, in a cage. So Jay comes out, and he's all wacky. He's all yeaten. And he's going to go beat up Drew, but the Judgment Day shows up. And so out comes Seth, Sammy, and Cody. And they get in this giant brawl, and uh, Adam Pierce sends down nerds to break it up. And he says, yes, Drew is on Team Judgment Day. You baby faces, I need a fifth member by the end of the night. And by 9 o'clock, we're going to have a advantage match later. I want to know who's on each team. And so Drew steps up and stares down Jay, and then they leave. He also added no interference in the advantage match. Or that whoever throws the first punch, you lose the advantage. So Judgment Day's chatting. And Priest says, Rhea, I don't like the guy, but it was a good idea to add Drew to this thing. But as the leader of the Judgment Day, he says, mm. remember last week he said that and they got mad. He goes, ah, it's just hot. Didn't mean it. Well, he said it again. And he says, we should have discussed it. And she goes, well, you know. So Priest says, where is this guy? I want to be in the advantage match. And Rhea says, well, we should all discuss that as well. Let's wait for Drew and we'll talk. My God, this next match. Do I have hours? No, no, It's no. Raquel and Nia. Ugh. Okay? Uh. So they go back and forth for a while, and Nia posts her and starts working over her back. So now Raquel has a bad back. So Raquel makes a comeback. She hits the corkscrew spinning elbow, which she's won many matches with. But she doesn't cover. Instead, her brilliant plan is to lift up Naya. Well, she tries and she collapses. So that was a stupid idea. So then Naya drags her to the corner for the sit-down splash. Raquel gets under her and she decides, I'm going to try lifting her again. Well, you'll never guess. Naya squishes her a second time. And then it hits the sit-down splash and pins her. You could not be a dumber babyface. I mean, my God, I was watching this match. And then, as bad as the story was, making Raquel just look like a fool. So when Naya goes up for the uh, for her finish, the Anaya later, get it? Mm. Raquel's going to go under and get her up on her shoulders, okay? For a powerbomb. Well, listen, all you got to do, Naya, is put your feet on the middle ropes so she can get under you and lift you. Instead, as soon as Raquel gets under her, Naya just takes both of her feet off the ropes. And so you got to watch Raquel. She's, she almost kills herself trying to get Naya up on her shoulders. And literally all Naya had to do was help her a little bit by putting her feet up, but no. So she damn near killed her for real, and then she killed her in storyline. This was a disaster. I blame Vince. I'd like to blame Vince. I have to blame Vince. Even if it's somebody else there, I'm blaming Vince for the fact that Nia came back and absolutely positively does not help anyone in the division at all. Yes, you need a giant. You need somebody unique. Well, Raquel Rodriguez is pretty unique, and I have a feeling this is going to end with her body slamming Nia and getting a victory. But, I mean, come on. Come on. Of all people, Nia, come on. 
Drew showed up to meet with the Judgment Day. Priest says he's the leader. He wants the advantage match. Drew says, no, no. No. I've got to go out there and take out Jey Uso. And so Priest says, fine. I want the match. It's yours. Show your worth. Go get us the advantage. And Drew says, that's leadership. So then Seth says he wants Drew, and Jay says no. If Drew's in the ring, I want him. And so they finally all agree it's Jay and Drew for the advantage. And Sammy says, we'll be his fifth member. He says, you know, I hear that, uh, you know, SmackDown guys are not off limits. He wants Kevin, obviously. But Cody says, I have an old friend I could call. Which, by the way, in storyline is, should we get the guy that's wrestling regularly, or should we get the guy that's been out for eight months with a broken back? Hmm. Well, let's do that guy. Well, he's the son of Dusty. He likes big surprises. Becky Lynch and Zia Lee. This match, when it first started, it's like people like Becky, but they don't care one bit about Zaya. And every time Zaya got the heat, it was absolutely dead quiet in this building. But you know what? They worked, and they kept working, and they worked their asses off. And by the end, the crowd was into it. And they they were popping for the near falls there at the end. And then finally, Becky avoids a kick. Manhandle slam. Pins her. Turned into a very good match. And then afterwards, damage control comes through the crowd. And Charlotte, Shotzi, and Bianca rush in. Big brawl breaks out. Adam Pearce sends out security to break it up. Vinci and Kaiser meet. Kaiser was uh, given control over Vinci by Gunther. So he says, stay back here. Do not come out. I got this handled. So he goes out to face Johnny Gargano. And sure enough, here comes Vinci. Kaiser gets distracted, tells him to get the hell out of here. He gets hit with a kick. One final beat, he gets pinned. Vinci shrugs. Mm. Kaiser's furious. Pierce is talking to Piper and Chelsea. A bunch of teams show up. They all want a title shot. He signs a multi-person match. And then Maxine and Ivy wander in. I don't know what they want. And he goes, oh, let me guess. You wanted the match? Fine, you're in. And Ivy's like, well, actually, we... And Maxine goes, shoosh! She wants the match. No, I'm not going to do it. Do it. I have pride. Uh. Zoe cut a promo on Rhea. And then, yes, it is Ivy and Maxine, Natty and Tegan, Caden and Katana, and Indy and Candice in a four-way for the title shot. And, like, when the match began, I was like, this is going to be horrible, okay? And as I look at it, I'm not quite sure why... Because, you know, Ivy does a good job, Natty's good, Tegan's good, Kane and Katana are a good team, and Candace is good. There's a lot of variables It's there, only Maxine why. and Indy that I was really worried about. Dude, come but on. fans love Maxine. Yes, they Everything do. they did, everything she did, they were into. She's a cartoon. She is a total cartoon. And I love her because she gives it 200%. <laughs> like, 200% she gives this gimmick. And finally, at the end, Tegan rolled through a Maxine high cross pinder. And so, yes, next week, Tegan and Natty versus Piper and Chelsea for the tag team titles. Who added nothing on commentary. Nothing. No, they did not. Gunther ran into Kaiser and Vinci, and he is very, very upset at Kaiser. Ah. He says, maybe I put the wrong guy in charge. Now, he says, watch how I go handle this Miz. So Pierce meets with about 50 teams backstage and... Says, next week you're all in tag team turmoil. And then he runs an Al that says, we got to have a conver- conver- conversation, I guess. Also a confrontation. But we had a confrontation with The Miz and Gunther. Am I going to hell or what? I can't <laughs> wait for Gunther to kill this guy. <laughs> Miz is out there, and he talks about how he's got nothing but respect for this business. Well, by the way, by the way, he was a baby face. Yes, he, he is. He turned a baby face. Gunther comes out, says, Mike... Let me clarify. It's not I lack respect for you. I just have zero respect for you. I've heard that from you before. I don't understand this. You don't understand this ring is sacred. It's for fighting and competition. You are nothing but an entertainer. And Miz, who I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but he was on The Real World, and never once was he wearing a Randy Savage, Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, Shawn Michaels, or Bret Hart t-shirt. It was only Hulkamania shirts that he wore. He claims I... I just loved these these wrestlers, these intercontinental championship these work rate entertainers. Champions. I wanted that title. He says Big Tito fan. The reason we talk about those guys is they weren't a one note robot like you and Gunther laughs. 
He says, this is quite cute. And then Miz goes, I've been knocked down time and time again. I've reinvented myself. I was like, what? (laughs) You're the exact same Miz that was on the real world. You've done anything but reinvent yourself. Do you think he's Jericho? He says, had had Maurice do it for a minute. He says, we're going to find out Sunday. I'm going to climb that. uh, Anyway, he's talking about this or that. (laughs) And Gunther's just sees sick of this guy. And he goes, little Mike Mazanin, you're just a little weirdo that got bullied in high school. You pursued a career and you finally got to the big time. And what happened? They bullied you here as well. And he goes, you know what? I don't think you've been bullied enough. Fans are chanting USA, fall things. And so he starts bullying the Miz, do something about it. And so Miz punches him and Gunther boots him right in the face and kills him. And I'm like, God. And then he finally lifts Miz up or whatever. Miz hits a desperation low blow, hits the skull crushing finale. And Michael Cole screams, do it for all us weirdos, Miz. I'm Team Gunther. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just making sure. Yes. Then we had uh, Nakamura and Chad Gable. Great match. I can't say great, but it was really good. They had some excellent wrestling early. And Chad Gable's awesome. Him and Nakamura, it was good stuff. And then Gable tried to cradle. Nakamura sat on him, pinned him. We still don't know who Nakamura is calling out. Didn't sit on him like Nia would. But he wants somebody. Yeah, he didn't hurt him or make it difficult. <laughs> Ibar cut a promo on Bronson. I can't wait. I'll skip Survivor Series. I just want to watch Ibar and Bronson next week. And then uh, Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso for the advantage. <laughs> so Cole and Wade are arguing. Cole says, Drew, you know, Drew said he never got an apology, but just a few weeks ago, Jay apologized to Sammy. Wade goes, Sammy is not Drew. He said, show me one time ever, find the footage, that Jay said, I'm sorry to Drew McIntyre. And Michael Cole mutters, revisionist history. (laughs) And he goes, what are you talking about? These are just facts. Find me one time. So they're doing this match, and uh, Drew cuts him off, goes for the Claymore. Jay hits a jumping super kick. He goes up top. Drew grabs him, hits a future shock. Pins him. What? I mean, I was fine with a clean finish, but man, they jobbed out Jay Uso here. What? You guys complaining about uh, Jay White should be complaining about Jay Uso. Guy got pinned in the middle of the ring clean in an advantage match with Future Shock DDT. So then everyone shows up, big brawl, you know the whole deal. Well, and Jay Uso, though, when Cody was saying all of this stuff, had a really weird look on his face because there's somebody else he's never apologized to. Yeah, he was That's not happy Randy about Randy Orton being chosen. But Randy was chosen. He'll be there on Saturday, folks. And so will I. Well, afterwards. Wrestling Those Observer Lights. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.